Hola amigos, hola amigas, Dorian here from Uberlux. Welcome, bienvenido, croissue, salam alaikum. Welcome to the channel, y'all, and welcome to George. Hello. So, George has brought for me the, not, not for me, but to see, um, the Mila Blizzard CX-1 Parque Powerline. Now, I have only ever seen these in the shop, uh, or I've only ever seen them on other people's videos. So I've never actually seen one to actually switch on and play with. So you've never used one? I've never used one. Right. That's what I mean, yeah. Uh, so um, it's mahusiv. It's it's quite tall at the back. How long have you had this? How did you get it? Um, I got it off another collector, Michael. He sometimes washes. Um, oh, I know who you mean, yeah. Hello. Hello, if he's watching. How long ago must it be? I think it's probably the start of this year. Okay. So I've had it, I've only had it a couple of months anyway, put it that way. Um, oh, I think I'll start with, okay, I'll, my opinion, right, is, now you're going to need to prove me wrong on this, <laughs> is I really don't like it. Uh, simply because I don't understand why Mila decided to make a bagless machine. Why? Well, the, you know, I can't say I disagree with you really. <laughs> But um, well, let's let's get rid of that for now. It does have the turbo brush, which is this redeeming feature because I think that's the, well, one of the that. best turbo that brushes. Is. Ah, right, okay. I think Mila was just a little bit late to the party, really, with bagless cleaners. Okay. They were is there a second generation? Have they made any changes recently to the... Are they still making it? Neither. It'll be 10 years before they bring out a new one. <laughs> so they're still making it exactly the same? Yep, to my knowledge. Yep, and what's the power on it? It's 800... 890 watts. So that's, that's it's the same wattage as the Seabo, I think. Right, okay. I think that's 890. The Seabo X7. So it's got a parking bracket there, it's got a parking bracket there, one and the one, on the one on the side, lovely four wheels, what's it like for manoeuvring? Well that is it? one of its redeeming features, it's just like most mirrors, it has the nice caster wheels, which means it, uh, it floats around nicely on the floor, Okay. so that is one good thing about it, Yeah. obviously the fact that it's huge and it's heavy isn't great in the first place for dragging it around. Yeah. So probably on this carpet, which is quite thick, it wouldn't be too great. Okay. But I think on a hard floor, it should glide quite easily. Okay. But I do, I mean, uh, so you... You lift that up, yeah, and you pull it. And it comes off. Yeah. So it doesn't really have a... a, a it's a bit of a shark cyclone by the looks of it. Yeah, it's not really multi-cyclonic at all, really. Have you cleaned this out at all? Because uh, there doesn't seem to be much muck on the inside of this. Well, it seems pretty clean inside there. Well, the thing is, I was told that when Michael gave it me, he told me that you will find a lot of dirt does collect around this central <laughs> separator piece here. Yeah. But I think it depends what you pick up, really. If you pick up sort of, I don't know, things like twigs or, or things like that, yeah. that will get stuck around there, then obviously they will. But I not found it to be too bad. Okay, well, I'm going to bring the camera closer uh, so we can take Have a closer look off. at the inside. Okay, so we're now a little bit closer and that looks a bit mucky in there. Well, the thing is, I um, when I got it, I gave it all a good clean. Yeah. And I've used it enough to empty the bin twice. Okay. And the one thing I found about this is it gets filthy. Inside the bin, as you can see, yeah. as soon as it fills up with dust, you can hardly see through the bin anymore. So it does do a good job of pickup because it's a Mila, and of course Mila's do have very good pickup. Well, that's debatable with this, but anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, in uh, in, yeah. in general, yeah. It cl it clouds up the bin really. I mean, it's not too bad at the moment, but it yeah. does. So you can't see through it to see where it's full. But it has picked up lots of fine, fine dust. But I'm looking at the underneath of it, and that's all covered in dust. Yeah. When you take the when when it's time to empty, you take the bin off. Yeah. It's always covered in dust. I don't know where it comes from. It obviously leaks somewhere quite badly. I don't know if they all do this or whether it's just mine. Yeah. But I've, it's been like that all the time I've had it. It does leak really, really badly on the inside. Um, so I not mean, great if you have allergies. 
What about that pleated filter thing? Well, let's follow the dirt path. So okay. the dirt obviously comes through there where the hose enters. Yeah. It comes through here. Yeah. I mean, it has got a nice chunky seal around there. Yes. So you wouldn't think that would be doing too, doing too bad a job. Comes up there, and you can take this piece off. So okay. it comes up there and spins around that. And, and the idea is the, drop, the dirt drops down through that little hole there at the back. Okay. And then the super fine dust and the air is pulled through the little gauze filter there. Right, okay. So the dirt drops down there. The tiny little catch there is to empty the bin. Right, okay. So there you go. It is quite a high capacity bin, I'll give it that. Yeah. There is a lot of room for yeah, there does seem to dirt be, yeah. in there. And you've got a little collector there that's supposed to collect your fine dust just there and it's got a gap at the bottom there so it'll empty out when you God. empty the bin so in a way it's simple but in a way it's complicated if that it makes seems any like sense. you're gonna need a vacuum to clean the vacuum yeah when you empty the bin it's still filthy yeah, exactly and obviously it covers you in dust it's covered I mean, in you dust can, you can see now you're covered in dust on your jeans you know it's got a nice big seal around the bottom there and it's got a big seal around there, so really there shouldn't be any leakage of dust, but there clearly is. But the thing is now, everywhere. that seal is covered in dust. Yeah. So when you go to reseal it, because no, you know, pe generally people aren't going to, you know, re-clean that mm. seal to make it. The sure idea it is, like from a collector's point of view, like you might do this, and a lot of people might do this. They'll yeah. clean this out when they empty it. Yeah. But the average customer no. isn't going to do that. They're no. not going to take a damp cloth to the whole thing. No every time they empty the bin. They're mm. not going to strip it and wash it. That's probably their only vacuum. So that's why I don't right, okay. sort of give it, me an idea of how it works in the real world. Yeah, give like. it a fair test, yeah. So in theory, that's empty now and that's clean and ready to use again. Oh God. So that's that bit covered. Um, the filter here, it is supposedly self-cleaning. When you, when you clean it out and you want to... Um, before you empty the bin, you have got a, a self-cleaning feature where if you press the button there, it'll light up. And right. Switch the machine off. Yes. You'll hear the filter... Um, the, th the pleats. Yeah, or... yeah, you'll hear it yeah. as it uh, supposedly self-cleans, and then when it's done, it'll come back on again. Right, okay. So, to remove the filter, you twist twist it like that. Yeah. That's um, the self-cleaning bit, if you can hear it. Flicking on the, fil on the pleats. So when yeah. you press the button, something in there turns this and... That's yes. how it's supposed to clean. Pretty much filter. like my old national footstool vacuum cleaner. That's right. got a comp, but it does it constantly. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, twist this again to open it. And, oh uh, my god! When you have cleaned the filter, the idea is the fine dust drops into the bottom of there. Yeah. And then you take that out and you just empty out the fine dust. But realistically, I mean, it's you can... filthy. Yeah. It's absolutely filthy. I cleaned this yesterday. I took it outside. You're yeah. not supposed to brush this filter, actually, because it... Ah, uh, okay. Wears I its... understand. It, it would probably yeah, make the pleats go. fluffy. Yeah. Yeah. You can wash it, but you're not supposed to brush it. But I have brushed it. So, <laughs> yeah. But I did this yesterday, and you can see how much dust is falling off it already. And that's all it's picked up in this time. Oh, God. And I don't even have to shake it, and there's dust falling no, off it. it's like snow. So... That shouldn't need cleaning yet, in theory. So that's. But again, you're putting all your hands on in all in all yeah. the. You have to touch all this. Exactly. Hmm. And then obviously the dirt, sorry, the air comes out through the centre of the filter, into the motor there. Now, unusually for a Miele, um, there's no, there is a post fil motor filter, but it's not one that the customer can access and replace. Right, okay, yeah. You can buy them, but they're really expensive to buy. Yeah. But. You know, the air comes out the sides here. Okay. You can't actually access the filter to take it out, clean it, or anything like that. Okay. You would probably have to end up stripping the whole machine down hmm. um, to get to the filter, which is in there somewhere. Uh, so when you've done that, it pops back in there and you twist it to close it. Okie dokie. Pop that back on there. And close the handle and it doesn't come off. And then you're ready to rock and roll. Yep, sure. You've got your tools on the side there, so that's the dusting, that's the uh, upholstery tool. That's your, well, standard for standard, a meter, so yeah. that is. Dusting brush, You've got your that crevice tool, hmm. upholstery tool. What do you think of that? I'm um, pretty much bog standard mealer, to be honest. True. 
But I mean, for a vacuum that costs yeah, maybe exactly. three hundred pounds, yeah. that yeah, exactly. that's your repository tool. Yeah. Now, good luck finding your dusting brush. Because it doesn't have one. You don't get one. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you can get a little dusting brush which goes on the end of uh, the wand. Okay. But isn't stored on board the machine. Mm. So let's pop the hose back on. Which is a bit of a shame, really, because Mila's are sort of like famous for having the three tools. They're They've always, always Mila have always been a, sort of a premium, you know, high quality German machine. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, this is high quality, you know. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's yeah. not a flimsy machine by any means. It's like everything is really nice on it, apart from this. It's just they could have done so much more with it. I it's think, like sharks. Really. I like the shark vacuums. But I don't like the dustbins. Mm. And I love Mila, and this looks really modern and whatever, but I just don't like the dustbin. It is nice and user friendly, you know, you've got yeah. clear on off pedal, yeah. comfort know, rewind, to, controllable, you know, easy to use controls, good plastic. Sure. So obviously, you pull nice out. Nice long cable. I don't know exactly how long it is off the top of my head, but it's, it's That's not too bad. And obviously you've got the comfort rewind where if you just press it once, it's winding all the way by itself. Yeah. Cool. Right, right, so I think we're going to go and plug this on, and we'll plug it in, I mean, and we'll give it a bit of a demo. Okay, so we've got it plugged in, and yeah. we're going to give it a go. Uh, before oh. we start, I'll just say about this handle here. This isn't the original handle that came with the cleaner. It would have come with the sort of standard Miele curved ah. handle. But... Um, Again, you'll see why in a minute, but that broke, that did. Right. And uh, it has this one for now. So these these don't actually operate the machine. Oh, that's a shame. Unfortunately. <laughs> these are for the remote model, which I presume is a higher model. Oh, um, right, but, it, but there is a remote model Blizzard. Um, I think so, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's off some some kind of meter anyway. Okay, that. cool. But the one is slightly different. Well, to the meal as I'm used to anyway. That has got the same one as my, that's the same wand as my uh, C3 um, Eco line one. See, the thing is, those mealers don't mean much to me because I prefer the old ones. Yeah. Sort of the 80s and 90s, really. Yeah. But I'm going to guess that's probably current standard, if you like. Uh, this one, this is the floor tool that this came with. Okay. The Ecotech Plus. Okay. Which is an absolute pile of shit. Oh, is it really? It is, yeah. But there's a plastic, the floor plate is plastic. Oh, right. It's plastic, and obviously to get high uh, ratings for pickup tests, yes. it's sealed as they all are. Okay. You can't push it at all, unless it's on... You can push it usually on, on the second setting, that's, that's really about it, really, the limit, okay. and where you can push it on any carpet. Um, it does have the limb pickers on there, but it doesn't pick up hair on any carpet. Right, it's okay. It does not pick up hair at all. Okay, dokey. It just rolls it up and it'll just push it along and it won't. Hmm. Hmm. Plus, not to mention, it is quite a small floor tool as well. Yes. So. And, not, but it's a premium machine. Yes. Yeah, just not great there. No. Um, because it's the parquet model that came with the XL twister. Oh, that is head. amazing. Which is, I think it's great if you've got a lot of hard floor yes, like you have. Love it. But with me, obviously I've only got the kitchen, and then it's carpet, and yeah. then the hallway, then it's carpet. So I didn't really find that too useful. What I did um, like about the Miele XL Parquet Twister floor head is it's so f low, it can go under my fridge. It is It is a good tool. Mm. Well, I think but if, again, you, if you're using it a lot, yes. whereas with me I'd be... You know, stopping, changing the floor head to yes. that one. So, you know that I'll just for the amount of hard floors that I have. Yes. I'll just press the button. That's that, fine. Yeah. Leave it as that. Okay. It doesn't come with the cat and dog head. No, but, but it's still uh, we had one lying around. So, heads. Yeah, we'd pop that with it. But I that's love mine. Bit, that's. I don't know whether it's this carpet or this cleaner or. I've not been too impressed by that either, really. No, it's probably the carpet. I would have to say because I have difficulties with it uh, when I'm doing the shaggy rugs mm. but for the carpets and everything uh, no problem at all. I know there is a newer style of Miele turbo brush which I don't have yet Okay. which is slightly different in shape I think it's got some kind of uh, twist control on it whereas okay. it's got the 
basic slides along there. But uh, I'm yet to try one of those. No, so I haven't tried one of them either. I don't know what it looks like underneath. I can't imagine it looks too much different no. to, to that underneath. But uh, okay. we'll see about getting one of those at some point. So let's move the cleaner over here. I'll start it on the low power so you can hear what it sounds like on the lowest setting. Okie dokie. It is a quiet machine. Yeah, it's lovely. That is quiet. Oh, so there is another redeeming feature on it. I mean, obviously it's not going to do too much on the lowest setting. No. The next one up, which is the, the Rooks, if you like, setting. Okay, now I can hear it. You can hear the structure coming through now, and it's already becoming hard to push. Yes. The thing is, though, this carpet is notorious for that. Yeah. But it's the same one, you can use it on any carpet. I mean, you can use it on this carpet from here. Still just the same, it's getting hard to push. Yes. So I'm going to pick this up now, otherwise, I've never. I mean, you can see there, none of that got stuck around that cone, central cone piece in no. there. So it's fairly effective as a cyclone. It's very, very quiet, it's very nice. So I mean, anything is setting higher than this, and you just you just can't move. You just the thing. it's stuck. Yeah. Same on this carpet. It's just, just can't move it. Now let's pop the turbo brush on. And that's still really hard. Well, it's, it's much better than using that. What's it like on that carpet in there? Yeah, it's better. It's better, yeah, but, but it still. doesn't feel like it's really gripping the carpet. And obviously, you put it on any lower setting, you get less. Yeah. Then again, it's not the best. Which makes vacuuming just um, a workout. It is, yeah. I mean, it's better, but you can see by the marks it's leaving. They it's sort of leaving patches, so maybe yeah. you can see that on yeah, there. Yeah, very clearly. And then it's just clamped. Yeah. Regardless of the tools. tool for pet hair because it's got these, albeit they're not as good as actual lint pickers, but it has yeah. got little rubber bits on there, yeah. But it's just a shame it's so short and yeah, I know what you mean. stubby. Which, I mean, if you got that on a 50-60 grid cleaner, I yeah. think that was that was fine, that was great, but... But not on a high-end one. No. Of, of that price. The people that bought this cleaner originally, Paid £279 for it. Hmm. And if you just got that on a £279 cleaner, yeah. I'd have been sorely disappointed. Yeah. I'd have been disappointed with the whole thing, really. But um, given I didn't pay £208 for it, that softened the blow a little bit, shall we say? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. That's why I'd rather wait and I get these all second hand or trash or whatever and then try and fix them up. But yeah. But I mean, if you don't use the cleaner at all, then it's great. Yeah, <laughs> it'll stay clean. The features that it has, you know, bar actually pushing it along the floor, yeah. are great. Like, I love the comfort rewind. Yes. You just press the button once. Done. And it's done. Yeah. I think this machine is, um, would be better, personally, in my opinion, if you really only had 
like a lot a lot of hard floors mm. and just a few area rugs maybe i mean it does go it's not compact but it's more compact than it is yeah you know, if you store it away like that. I mean, I do like it. I wouldn't go out and... I personally wouldn't go out and buy one brand new. But I would buy one like you did, second hand. But I wouldn't be forking out my money for one brand new in Curry's today. Mm. It would just be nice to see if they updated it even just slightly. Mm. You know, but it's just it's just surprising because it's like you have only used it as an an end user, mm. and so the inside filled, of that is manky. I fill two bin. It's fill two bins. Yeah. So it's not like I've abused it. For no, or mess tests or anything. No. No. But yeah, but it's um it's good, but um it's not that good. The disadvantage is, going by Neela's track record if you like mm. when they bought out the upright the s7 mm. you know some people like that and if you if you like that then that's great but there were a lot of flaws to it yes but that was bought out over 10 years ago and we're still waiting for a new upright to be redesigned yeah so is that how long we're going to wait for a new bagless cleaner to be redesigned yeah i don't know yeah but, mm. Yeah, I, I do I do like it, but um, um, I'm glad I don't have one as an everyday use. Yeah, if it was half the price yeah. it is, then maybe that would be better. It's just I don't understand why the cyclone on it is so bad. They could have designed such a better cyclone. Oh, I probably ought to show you the comfort clean before. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Should have, uh... Hang on a second, we've got to plug it back in. Okay, so we've got it plugged back in and we're going to take a look at this uh, yeah. comfort clean. The idea is, you've been vacuuming along. Yeah. You can go, it's, the suction's diminished a bit, you better clean the filter. Yeah. So, press the comfort clean. You'll wait for it to power down completely. And you can hear it cleaning off the filter as it goes. Disadvantage, again, another disadvantage to it <laughs> is with the filter being situated where it is, obviously, when it's just cleaned the filter there and it has, you know, it's done that, the dirt would have dropped down into the bottom of there. Yeah. But then when you switch it on, it's sucked back onto the filter. Ah. So that doesn't go. That doesn't get sucked into no, the bin. No, there's no, there's no gap or anything. There's no. Ah. That's obviously for the clean air to come out. Yeah, There's yeah, nowhere yeah. for the dust to come out, so it just sits in the bottom of there. Ah. But then surely, when it switches back on, surely that will just suck the dust back onto the filter. Yeah. Hmm. So I think the idea is you clean it and then you swish it off before it can suck the yeah. dust back. Okay. Hmm. So I think that could have been done a little bit better, really. But. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so would we give this a Hoovalux thumbs up or a Hoovalux thumbs down? Myself, uh -uh. George. I think I have to agree with you there. For uh -uh. what it is, that yeah. If it was say a hundred quid, then yes. Yeah. But not for the price. Not for nearly three hundred. No. Okay, so we're gonna pack this one away, and we're gonna come back with a little surprise, very unusual one. So bear with us. Okay guys, we are back with something that I have never seen before. It looks like something from Wally. -E. Well, it looks like it should talk. What is this? Well, whilst we're on the subject of self-cleaning filters, okay. This is a machine from Electrolux which also has a self-cleaning filter. Um but does it's dare I say slightly better yeah. than that despite this being <laughs> 10 years older than that is. I think this one still does. I've job. never seen it before. I've never seen anything like it before. It is so weird. So, well, is it bagless? Yes, this is oh, the right. Electrolux Twin Clean. Right. And there are a couple of different models of these. They did this one, there's one in red as well. Now, off the top of my head, 
I can't remember what the difference was between this one and the red one. Okay. Perhaps the red one didn't have the remote handle. Right, without okay. obviously having both to compare, I'm not sure. So, um, where did you get this from? This is so weird. This it's nice. It's well, it's really comfy to hold. This is one that Rob bought a, a few years ago. Yeah. Um, the idea was with it being a, it was a high end cleaner. Obviously, having the sand cleaner filter in, it's got okay. a power head as well. Yes, that's really good feature. I they like weren't that. cheap to buy. Yeah. And they weren't around for years and years. Yeah. So it was kind of. You know, pay the full price, buy one whilst they're yeah. around. And, uh, but this kind of reminds me a little bit of the Hoover Free Motion. Yes. It's yeah. very Free Motion-ish, but the handle it's and chunky, the... It's chunky, isn't it? Yeah, the chunky design yeah. of it. Mm. So I suppose we'll start with the cleaner itself. Okay, I'm going to get you guys a bit closer, and we'll take a closer look at this unusual thing. So it really does look like something um, that the robots are taking over the world with its eyes its nose and its mouth <laughs> okay right well the first thing obviously it was quite a, an expensive cleaner when it was new yeah. but it is very complicated okay it's, i don't think it's something that the average customer will find easy to use okay. which is probably why they didn't last all that long it's, it's, it looks like it's got so many different buttons and controls on it yes and you wonder really where to start um, well obviously it just comes in through here and you can see there you've got the electric controls oh, for yes. the electric head. Uh, well, the dust comes in through there and goes straight through the middle again, just like the Miele, uh -huh. and fills up at the back here. Okay. So uh, the first thing to do is you have press the unlock button there to take the bin off. Oh, wow. Oh, that's cool. And the bin opens up like so, which ah. is slightly more convenient. And because it's not clear, like the Miele, yeah. it's less easy to see that it gets all cloudy and you can still see the dust spinning when it's on, Yes, but um, you don't notice it suddenly cloud up like the Miele has. Okay. So you've got the dirt chamber in there and you've got the little, again very similar to it the Miele, a little yes. uh, separator crappy cyclone thing in yeah. there really, and uh, you obviously tip that out. I've been using this cleaner quite a lot lately so it's a uh, got a fair bit of dust in it <laughs> so that's there and then I have to remember which way around it only goes on I think you have to do I mean, you have to do it that way first and then the back. back on yeah oh, once again I'm covered in dust <laughs> uh, the filters in this because it has two filters oh wow obviously one is being used to filter the air yes and then you turn you pull it up here and you turn it round to sort of use the other one whilst you're cleaning. Um, the idea was you could clean one filter and vacuum right, at the same okay. time if you like. So, oh, so one is literally just a storage container? Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. So now let me make sure I don't get this wrong, but the idea is you swap these round obviously to clean them in turn. Yeah. And it's got this little trigger here. Now, that's pressed down by this piece of plastic here. So when you lift ah. this up, it knows that it's gone into the filter cleaning right, okay. mode. And it diverts the suction from the hose to one of the filters. I can't remember which one right, okay. is to clean it whilst it's running. And the dirt goes into the bin. The dirt is then sucked back into the which bin. Which is far better than the, the, which the Miele one should yeah, do that. as opposed to being left in the bottom. Yes. Okay. Left in the bottom of there. Now I don't 100% understand how <laughs> how it works or how it's managed to get itself sandwiched in. Hang on, we'll pause for technical right, issues sorted. Okay, we're back. Um, and I have been using this quite a lot. It has filled more than just that. Yeah. And the filters, yes there is still dirt on the filters, but they aren't, you know, coated. Well, th that's the thing. The, the, it's been, the dirt's been sucked into the bin and not left at the bottom of the containers in there. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, sure. But if you want Miele, to get a, 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 a close-up view in there, or... Yes. Okay. I think this piece removes 
somehow to uh, see inside it as well. Um, there you go. So I would. Part of me wants to explain how this all works, but um, it's um, yeah beads, mirrors, and yeah, magic. Sure. What? <laughs> what? How I think it works is this. Uh, the diverter thing here shuts off the suction there, so there's no suction to the hose. Yeah. The suction is then channeled through the hole, the little hole there. Yeah. And through into this filter, so it sucks the dust off this filter back through into the bin. Right. Okay. Obviously, without the idea is without getting it on this filter. Yes. It's supposed to. Obviously, some will filter through because it's fine dust. Yes. But and then coat this one. Okay. But obviously, not as much. Mm. It is. It's quite a complicated machine, really. You can it's understand. Very clever. You can understand why they they aren't massive machine. You know, they're not everywhere these days. I don't think really caught on. No, I think you would have had to have said uh, the basics of intelligence to be able to operate it without breaking it. So maybe yeah. that's why they didn't last. It's not not a simple machine to uh, operate at all, really. No, but it's nice. I like it. It is, yeah. Now the one thing you'll notice. If you try and lift it, it's, it's very, very heavy cleaner. Yeah, it is actually, yeah. It's That's... got a lot of bulk to it, a lot yeah. of weight to it. <laughs> yeah. And yes, you have one caster, but you uh... don't have the casters on the bottom like the meter. So okay. it doesn't, you know, you end up tugging on the hose and it's, it's okay. trying to follow you and it's, you know, limping along like a snail. Okay, yeah. I get yeah. So they could have got... done with a bigger caster on there, couldn't they, really? Yes. For, you know more casters like the Mila because it's a design that works well. Yeah, it does. Having yeah, the casters absolutely. On the bottom. Um, if you want to have a look at the, the ratings plate, it's eighteen hundred watts <coughs> max. There we go. There we go, and it's made in the EU, so it wasn't made in China, which is unusual oh. for, for a lot of fairly modern cleaners. Electrolux, would that be Italy, maybe Spain, Portugal? Some one of those countries. I couldn't tell you to be honest where they were actually made. Okay, so we are back with the little robot. Yep, sure. I'll pop the hose on now. Okay. Pretty average length of hose. Could be a bit longer. And then you've got the controls on the handle here. Obviously, you've got your. Um, sadly, it's only got a minimum and maximum. It's not got a a, a full ah. range. So to switch it on, you press either one of those two. Okay. Um, usually maximum, because obviously that's better. And um, that switches it off. Uh, you've also got your small tools on board as well. Well, two of them. All right. Okay, but that's handy. Got your crevice tool and your dusting brush. Yeah. It's quite a nice. That's natural bristle, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, quite a nice, that's nice. It's a decent size as well. Um, the only downside is you can see the shape of the opening. Oh, you can't Obviously use, you can't use any other tools no. at all on no. this. It does come with an upholstery tool as well, but there's nowhere to store it on board, okay. unfortunately. So that's a shame. I guess those would be the two brushes or you'd use the most, I guess. Well, you I could technically say, I, use that I use, other brush. I do use all three though. Yeah. I do. So it's a bit of a downside not having it on board. Yeah. Um, put this over here for a moment. This is the wand, which looks plastic, but it is you know, oh, metal okay. inside. And obviously, you've got your cable running down the protected bit there for the power to the head. And it is telescopic as well. Okay. So that's that. And this is your floor head. It's one of the most interesting things about this cleaner. It's got a power, uh, power yeah, that's nozzle. That's really nice. And. It's one of the very, very few power nozzles that isn't chunky and big and heavy. It is quite low profile. It doesn't weigh any more than a normal cleaner head, feel it. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And obviously, you know, it's it will fit under the sofa and yeah. under things. And there's no you know, cable running around the hose or anything like that. Yeah. So that is quite a good feature of it. It's got a little light on the front there. The LED? Um... I don't know if it is, to be honest. <laughs> You'll have to see when it comes on. Yeah. Uh, this is the brush roll. Now, we were saying this brush roll is very similar to what the Dyson cordless cleaners have these days. Okay. Because you've obviously got the two sets of bristles. You've got the, the stiffer bristles and the softer bristles. So that's very similar to what Dyson's have these days. Yeah. Um, 
But they are a lot longer. They are, and yes. And they do seem a lot yeah. tougher. Well, they're not carbon fibre, so no. that's a good thing. Yeah. They're not fantastic, but better than straight suction, really. Um, what's also unusual is you've got the little roller wheels at the end. I was wondering, don't, yeah, the roller wheels. What? You don't really see that on... Doesn't that impede side suction? Or, oh, well, no, I can see a side suction part. True, there is, yeah, but I suppose that's probably... More for hard floors, really. Oh, uh, right, okay. To protect the corners, I don't know. Yeah. And you've got the little felt. Uh, yeah, I saw them, they're nice and felty, as well. Yeah. And the squeegee strip as well. So it is quite a, a nice. For a power nozzle, it is. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not quite as aggressive as, as the bigger, bulkier ones, mm. but it's not as big or bulky, so mm. what would you rather have for it? Mm. I suppose it's a bit down to the user. So, the cable comes out the back here, Ooh, and as you can see, it's a bit like a, a Sebo uh, cylinder, where yes. you just pull it again to get you rewind okay. back in. And you have Which does really get on my tit a bit, because mm. if you accidentally pull it as you're going around furniture, it does prone then to go back in. Mm. Now, the one thing you'll notice about this, because it's a high-end cleaner, yeah. you have masses and masses of cable and obviously with it being a cylinder you've got the hose and the tubes as well yeah so you have it's got a wide reach now you have got a really really long i think it says 13 meters total reach hmm. that. so you probably have 11 meters on the cable and two meters on the hose wow. that's good so for a cylinder to have and they've I mean, done it well because it's flat cable even if this is just 10 meters yeah. i know the henry has 10 meters but most cylinders well, a lot of cylinders, especially from electric ones, wouldn't have that long cable. So to get it going, we'll put it on max. Um, Nice carpet lines, even carpet lines. You just skip ever so slightly on this carpet. Yes. So when you're pushing it forward, yes. a lot of times it's quite like skip when you pull it in the back. This is the opposite, isn't it? When you push it forward, <laughs> it's fine when you pull it back. On me. I don't know if you can really pick it up. You can see the dust is yes. pretty mad inside that. So that's a pretty good sign for me. Yeah, it does, yeah. I Like on the shorter pile of carpet in here. That's yeah, again, nice. It's not great, still these patches, but. Well, you can't really beat the price of carpet. No, exactly, no. So, it's not great, but still a workout. I'm a big fan of those natural bristle brushes. It's really soft. Yeah, it? lovely. Lower power, which takes it down quite considerably. That's good. It's a shame that's there's good. not something in the middle. No, but it's still got enough cyclone actually. Look at the dirt. Oh, yeah, it's, it's still, still spinning. Around. Yeah, sure. Well, switch it off. I'll show you the idea of the self clean oh, yes. filters. So you lift that up and then it activates the, the little trigger there. Mm -hmm. So when you switch it on now, there's no. 
no I suction know. to the hose. It's all diverted to the filter. Wow. You can twist the filter as well. Ah. Take the dust off it. And this is then sucking it back into. Oh wow, the that is so cool. And then when you're done, it will uh, this piece here will activate. So basically, the Mila Blizzard should have would be better with something like this. True, yeah. I mean, to take the dust from the filter into the bin, not I, just sitting at the bottom. I don't think any self-cleaning filter is as good as actually taking the filter out and cleaning yeah. it yourself. But, but still, at least this removes the dust off the filter. Yes. Whereas that just, just sits in the bottom leave, of it. Just flicks it or off. Or possibly, like you were saying about going back onto the yeah. printed filter. I mean, again, there is a chance that the dust it sucks through will just pass straight through and back onto the filter. Hmm. But when, not all of it should. Um, th there's a battery in that, I assume, is it? Or is it powered from the, from the main machine? Well, it says it's remote control. But at the same time, you do have the electric running through the hose so anyway. Possibly the control wire could be running through it. Well, mind you, this cleaner is probably the best part of 10 years old and there's never had yeah. any battery change or anything like no, that. So, so possibly no. Maybe no it battery. isn't remote control. And what happens if the control breaks? Can you control that then from the machine? No. There's no way of, there's no way of switching the machine on at all now without the hose on there. Okay. So if you ever misplaced or broke the hose, you stuff. You can't just <laughs> find a hose that fits. <laughs> well, that's the problem with a lot of cylinders that rely on some kind of switch on the handle. That's true. Yeah. You have to have the exact hose. Yeah. The correct hose for the cleaner. Yeah. You can't mod anything. No. Mm. So again, a bit like the Mila, it is a bit of a, a novelty. You know, it's an unusual. Yeah, I really, nice, I, I really, really do like that. Nice thing to have. Yeah. I've no definitely. idea how much that would have cost originally. Absolutely no idea. Mm. Um, I can't imagine it was cheap, given what. No, but I do like that. I do like that a lot better than the Blizzard. If I had a choice between the two, I would choose that. Mm, I would as well. Power nozzle and better thing. The dustbin. I'm still not a fan of that. I still think it's very messy. Well, I think you'd rather have a bag, really. <laughs> exactly. You'd rather uh, have a bag cleaner over either of these. Yeah, but yeah, I really like that. So change of plan because I saw this in the hallway and I thought I really want to have a go at this one. Uh, this is the Goblin Electra yeah. and this is the more modern one uh, compared to the one that I refurbed which was the Hoover Junior knockoff which is this one. So that's the one I refurbed, and then that is the next model up, I guess, really, yeah, the newer so model. Obviously, they share name and both being made by a Goblin. But that's about where the similarities end. Yeah. Oh, okay. they're both bagged. <laughs> yeah. Right. So what year is this from? It looks very 70s. 70s. Yeah, I don't know the exact year. Because of the colour of it. It's got to be 70s, if not very, very early 80s. And really unlike that one with the fake headlight, that actually does have a headlight? I think so. We will soon yeah. see. Yes. Yeah. Voice of God told us yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> right. So, obviously this one... Shares is not... the same kind of button on it. Yeah. Yes, actually, that's true. Yeah. Same button, different colour. Obviously, this is a lot more plastic. Ah, uh, yeah. There's... A... The entire thing, very, very almost the entire thing is made of plastic. It's very um, Electrolux 170-ish with the handle being the dirt tube. Yeah, sure, very Auric. Yes, yes. As well, yeah, that sort of thing, unfortunately. But For clear uh, as well. Not to worry. Um, so let's have a look underneath. And yeah, this is the brush roll that came in... <coughs> Pretty much every goblin of, of the time. Okay. This one, the commanders had this exact brush roll as well. It's very clean. Uh, well, yeah, it's, um, I don't think it's seen a lot of use, this one. No, has I it? like it. It's in very good condition. Yeah, obviously you've got the beta, plastic beta bars and one row of brush strips. Yeah. But unfortunately you can't take the brush strips out uh, on these and change okay. them. So if they wore out, which they did quite often, obviously you have to buy a whole new brush roll. Mm. Got the wheels underneath there. 
And the bag in the top here. All right, okay. Which is fairly unusual, the fact that you have um, two parts to the bag. You have this disposable paper bag like you would Hoover Junior. Okay, yeah. And you have uh, a fill color. But that's really good though because well. it's it's a top fill, so True, it's yeah. easier. True. And you could easily um, use cut up Sibo bags and if you wanted mm -hmm. to. But you just have to remember not to throw the whole thing away. <laughs> no. Because otherwise, then. Uh, Did people do that? I wonder. They must have done, I suppose, because <laughs> they changed it on on the models afterwards, like the Commander. That was just one. You know, you pop the bag when you didn't have a need for mm. this. So that goes on there, like that. And then you twist these clips to hold it in place. That, that's a nice, simple design. True. Yeah. And these were like budget backs, were they? Well, they certainly weren't very expensive. No. No. They do a lot better than a lot of modern ones. The only issue is though, obviously they were all plastic and they didn't last. No. <coughs> I think that was Godlin's. <coughs> Apart from the little type that you have, that sort of type of Goblin. Yeah. Most Goblins that came afterwards were almost entirely plastic and you got two years out of it, it fell apart, you threw it away and that was, <laughs> that was the end of it really. Well, you wanted to have a go with this one anyway. Yeah, so, on, so you can do the filming. Right, it's okay. Release the handle. to use and push around because this carpet is very very thick do you like that it that is nice and easy to push around let's pull my little beastie out and let's have a little comparison oh my god how did you reach down there Dorian's just struggling to get to the plug socket. Uh, three hours later. <laughs> three hours later. And some Crisco. Okay. Uh, let's put it on high. Has the belt come off? Has the belt has come off? So which one do you prefer to use? This one. I prefer to use this one. It seems to be, uh, it's a lot, it seems to be a bit lighter, so it seems to go over the carpet better. So yeah, 
I prefer this one. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. We have done a test on these three machines. Well, three and a half if you include my little goblin out there. Um, no, mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Definitely yes. Definitely yes. I didn't realise there was a height adjuster at the side. Yes, there is. Uh, yeah. Very good on the carpet. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed today's video with George and myself and Chris in the background. Oh, oh yeah. Cameraman. And um, yeah. Thank you very much yes, for bringing them along. And I was really uh, pleased to actually be able to see this up in detail and work in and sort of like get my mitts on. I think what I'm you were going. trying to say is you were really pleased that you didn't have to buy one. Yeah, I'll probably. Try one. I'll have a look on uh, because I, they are very popular, aren't they? Yes, maybe it's because everyone realises they're a bit crap and trying yeah. to sell them. So that's why I'm going to do I'm going to have a look on eBay and see if I can find one that nobody wants anymore. Probably Easy. battered and abused. You know how much you want to pay for one of these. Ten I'm not, not going to say to you, or oh, don't spend any more than 20 or whatever. Yeah. You know how much one yeah, exactly. worth to you. Yeah, exactly. 30, 40 max. Yeah. Um, I'd pay for one of them. But uh, yeah, it's nice to try it. Um, I'm really impressed with this. I, I do like the look of it. I like the way the filters work on it. And I like that one because it's just traditional it's 70s. So retro. And, and, yeah, it's, yeah, it's very, very kitsch. Very, very kitsch. I love it. Yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for George for demoing and explaining everything to us. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. So bye. bye.